welcome to the next episode. Today is episode of Margaritas with Margarita Chang, CFP Pro. I'm Hope Katsky, producer of the show on the Incandescent Radio Network and Incandescent TV. Today, we are thrilled to be here with Cleo Curry. She is a CFP and a Chartered Retirement Planning Counselor. So she's going to talk all about that. Over to you, Rita. Well, thank you so much. Hi, Cleo. Thank you so much for being here with us. It's great to be here. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, Hope. Well, we are so excited because there's so much exciting information that Cleo is here to share with us. But the theme is Money Talk Guides to Commonly Avoided Conversations. And before we get into it, some of the reasons why we avoid this is because it's difficult. Yes. And Cleo is here to help us navigate these conversations. So, Cleo. Um, again, thank you for being here and help us like navigate some of these difficult conversations. I think the first one that jumps out is like your spouse partner doesn't want to talk about money. I'm not talking about money does not mean that the problem is going to go away. So that's a big question. Um, how do you, what are your tried and true strategies to maybe break the ice? Yes, that it's a very good question. And having been in this industry since 2003, watching couples navigate financial conversations, not only can be difficult, but they can be stressful. And one of the um, things that our research has found, particularly in a research report that we put out called On Your Worth, is that financial conversations can remain difficult even as the couple's wealth grows over time. Um, one thing that is true is that eight out of 10 women will ultimately be taking over their finances because one of the statistics that is quite jarring is 80% of women will die married and 80%, I'm sorry, 80% of women will die single and 80% of men will die married. And so it's particularly important for women to be able to express themselves during a financial conversations to ensure that their needs and their wishes are taken into consideration alongside their spouse. One of the ways to do that that I've found to be quite effective is with having regularly scheduled conversations. So one of the more stressful things that comes up is we don't know when to bring it up, right? When do I talk to my husband about this? When do I talk to my wife about this? Or you have, you know, couples where they are same sex. And so when those things happen, I have found that the very first thing to do is to have these conversations scheduled. You can either do this at a time when you're speaking to your financial advisor, which is where someone like me comes in and I help facilitate these conversations. Or you can bring this conversation up together with the preparation of giving the other person the consideration of asking them, is this a good time? I found twice a year is pretty much a good time of year for couples to have this conversation. And if you haven't done this before, there's about five key questions that you can ask yourself to get this, get this started together. And one of the questions that a couple can ask collectively is, what do you want to accomplish in your life? What are your main concerns? What do you want your legacy to be? And who are the people that matter most? And what, what do you plan to achieve your life's vision? And that can help uncover other questions that will allow the couple to collectively address difficult conversations. So hopefully that's a very high level overview of how this can be approached. I really love it. I love how it's collective because as you know, when we're doing retirement, we're planning for the couple. Mm -hmm. um, but a couple also has individuals. So it's important to respect and honor the needs and concerns of each individual while planning as a couple. And I love how this is um, open-ended. And um, that statistic that you're saying is quite jarring. 80% of men will die married. married. 80% of women die single. And that is 
statistic that I believe drives home the point, the impact and the importance of women taking ownership of their finances. No doubt. I mean, one of the difficult conversation, I think it's in, in here too. I may have to financially support my parents in the future. Mm-hmm. How do I plan for this? The conversation about, you know, caring for your parents in retirement, as well as, you know, what if there's a long term care event? Having navigated this myself, um, I, I know from my experience that you can't scare people because then they're freeze, but sometimes using a life event. So I did the birth off of my second child, my son. Mm-hmm. My parents were so happy to have a granddaughter and a grandbaby, and it wasn't um, a grandson, granddaughter, their grandbabies. It wasn't bait and switch. That's when I was like, oh my God, I had to plan for their college. I have to plan for my parents. And then asking them their vision. Mm-hmm. Um, can you? Uh, share some insight how people can, you know, get their parents to talk about, you know, their estate. Because sometimes people think, well, why do you want to know? You just want to know how much money. How do we address that? Yes. You know, Rita, I've also had to address this. I'm married and have, we have, my husband and I have aging parents. And one of our parents um, is widowed and needs financial support on a monthly basis. And I will say that I can relate in the sense of oftentimes these expenses can be significant. They can be hundreds of dollars. It can be recurring or it could be thousands of dollars. And also it can be unexpected. And so it's one of the things that I wanted to share today is some language that we can use and that folks listening can use when they're considering the truth that they may be in a they may be in a situation where they may have to support their parents, or I won't say have to, where they may be able to support their parents. And I like to share this with you, and I just kind of um, sketched it out. And, and one of the ways to start that conversation is when you're meeting with your parents or parent, is to say, "I love you. I want to make sure that you're financially comfortable throughout life." And I know talking about finances with someone that you've raised and taken care of can be very uncomfortable, but this is unfamiliar for both of us. Let's talk about it. Let's face it together. Let's talk about any concerns you have and how I can help. And putting together my own financial plan is gonna be helpful for me knowing what needs to be addressed and what I may be able to set aside for you. And this will help all of us to feel more better prepared. I think it's so special how you open up just saying, I love you. Mm -hmm. And you just acknowledge that it's, this is difficult. And this is nothing that either one of them experienced. But by talking about it, we're going to make it so that all of us are better prepared. So who can say no to that, right? You just told me you loved me. You told me that you want me to be okay. And you told me that we're going to work on this together. So I I just can't throw up my hands and walk away from you. Yes. And one quick tip is even before this conversation, or even if this conversation may not be something that that you are ready to have, you you can start to prepare anyway by setting aside a separate account and start contributing a, a a monthly amount so that there's money set aside in the event that something should come up. So that's another way to approach it. Well, thank you for that too. I think another thing it, that may also be important for people who are watching and listening is having cultural sensitivity to our clients. Um, in some communities, even though you kind of alluded this, but even though you don't have to, it's almost like you do want to. So being mindful when you're people's budgets and their line items you know no judgment here if there's like an $800 expense mm-hmm. don't think that people are engaging in reckless behavior that's right and as a black woman I certainly have experienced feeling obligated to help other family members and being open and honest about what I'm uh, able to contribute what I'm able to contribute and with my other family members, 
first. It's just, I would say that the biggest thing is, is I do find this to be more prevalent in uh, diverse communities where there's a sense of uh, inherent responsibility, especially if one of the family members is more, is doing better financially. Um, but I'd say the most important thing is to address it, face it, and have a, have a direct conversation and a compassionate one. Absolutely. I really appreciate that's true. I think about, you know, my grandmother, she didn't have much for retirement. I know times are different. Her retirement, quite honestly, were her three children. They sold everything they had to get to America. All three kids earned degrees. Mm -hmm. And so from their degrees, they supported mom. Right. Um, it might be different, but this is more prevalent in minority, diverse, multicultural communities that, you know, you tighten your belt and help where you can. But um, as my daughter says, you can't pour from an empty cup. And that's where Cleo comes in. You, like, set parameters. You can help. But so that's actually a really good question. How do you coach a client or say to a client, hey, it's okay to help. I don't want you to not help your family. But if you continue on this path, you may not be able to be financially independent. So that is a very good point, and I'm glad you brought it up. The, the best way that I have found to help, clients, and again, I've been in the industry since 2003, and I've worked with hundreds of clients, and with also bringing in a, a cultural competence into the conversation. And the best starting point is a financial frame with multiple scenarios constructed within that plan. And the first scenario could be everything as it is if the, if the client does not change course, right? So making no changes, this is exactly how your plan uh, is aligned through to be healthy or not healthy through the life of the plan. And then, you add, and then I add in a scenario where they do change that behavior. And their savings increases for their own needs and their cont contribution to their families decrease. And then they see, wow, I really don't have the cushion that I thought to continue to support even multiple families. And so I think seeing that side by side, that barometer of the, pro the probability of success is an eye opener. Thank you for that. And as you mentioned, it's eye opener for them, then they're empowered to make that decision. If it's not you or me telling them not yeah. to do this. So, Cleo, I am so proud of you because you are about to be hitting the 20th anniversary. That is a, such an important mm -hmm. milestone. You are CFO, um, Charter Retirement Council, and so much more. How can people connect with you and follow your work? So you can certainly reach me on LinkedIn, you know, as Cleo Curry at LinkedIn. And I'm also at UBS Financial Services. So I have a website as well. And uh, through one of those two avenues, you can certainly find me there. Well, thank you so much for sharing your insight and wisdom with us, Cleo. And now back to you, Hope. Thank you, Rita. Cleo, that's amazing. Just doing a great job. Such really important statistics, things that people don't realize, I think, and just planning ahead. So hopefully everyone will be in touch with you. And to you, Miss Rita, thank you for your time today, everybody. You are watching Margaritas with Margarita Chang, CFP Pro. I'm Hope Katz Gibbs, producer of the show, and we will see you. UBS Financial Services, Inc., its affiliates and its employees do not provide tax or legal advice. Investors should consult with their personal tax and or legal advisors regarding their particular situation. Thank you so much for being part of our Incandescent Radio and TV family. This is Hope Katz Gibbs, founder of Incandescent Incorporated, the PR and publishing company for women entrepreneurs. Our Incandescent Radio and TV shows are brought to you by our advertisers and clients. Margaritas with Margarita Chang, CFP Pro, brings us 15 minutes of tips every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern on Facebook Live, where you'll meet experts who are helping us flex our financial muscles. Find all of the episodes at margaritachang.com. 
You'll also meet intuitive psychotherapist Kara Keem, who interviews therapists and other intuitive guides from around the world. Learn more at karakeem.com. And you're going to love social justice expert Karen Hanrahan, CEO of the San Francisco-based Glide Memorial Foundation. She bridges the gap from local impact to global change on her thought leadership show on Incandescent Radio. Learn more about Karen at karenhanrahan.com. You're also going to love Alina Liao, founder of the radical wellness journaling company, zenitjournals.com. Alina asks, have you tried to journal but found it hard to keep up? Then it makes it easier to journal for your wellness. With Zenit, you can customize your journal with prompts that speak to you. No more blank pages. Your Zenit is your personalized space to take care of yourself. Website, ZenitJournals.com. Feel it, write it, send it. You'll also meet amazing Tracy Schott, founder of Voices for Change. Tracy is determined to change the world and end domestic violence. Learn more at VoicesForChange.net. And we are so thrilled to be publishing a book for Angela Mitchell, who is the tech expert of case management. And she's also the founder of this fabulous organization, Kids Code 2. She is determined to teach kids to code computers. Talk about teaching a kid to fish. We invite you to discover and peruse all the Incandescent Incorporated websites, the magazine for women, by women, about women, incandescentwomen.com. Our health and wellness magazine is TheIncandescent.com, the business of mind, body, spirit, soul, and heart. Our YouTube channel is Incandescent.tv. And you can learn about our PR and book publishing services at Incandescent.us. If you'd like to have your own radio and video show, check us out at IncandescentRadio.com, where you can see what we can do for you. These podcasts are also featured on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Our podcasts are produced by Brandy Wilsker. Our videos are produced by Nelson Benitez. Our website developer is Max Tukoy. And our incandescent illustrator and designer is Michael Glenn. If you'd like to learn more, please send me an email, hope at hopegibbs.com. Here is to your incredible, indelible incandescent success. Much love and many.